So this is the practical application post for my episode titled Advanced Muscle Building Techniques with Dr. Guillermo Escalante. In the episode, we went over different uh, practices for advanced lifters. And when I say advanced lifters, I don't mean bodybuilders. I mean anybody who's lifting or been lifting for uh, you know, over a, a couple of years now. So whether you're a recreational lifter, you're lifting for aesthetics, you're lifting for health, you only lift two times a week. But if you've been lifting for a couple years now, I'd put you in the bracket of someone who can benefit from this. And even some beginners might benefit from some of these as well. But uh, first caveat to understand and know is that advanced techniques are not necessarily better than traditional training. A lot of the research shows that the gains are pretty similar, um, but why would you then want to use advanced practices? So advanced practices could be for a couple reasons. It might be that I hit a plateau. It might be that mentally I just need um, you know, to spice things up a bit. Maybe it's because of my schedule. There's some advanced practices that you can help you save time or uh, things like that as well. So um, different advanced practices may still be beneficial uh, you know, to incorporate in your training. So before we get into a couple of the practices, I can't go over all of them, but I'm going to give you two before we go. I want to go over what makes muscle grow. When you understand what makes muscle grow, you understand the components, you understand the big picture and the big principles to understand and when you understand that you can then look at a practice and get an idea of if it may or may not work and you'll never know till you put it to the test but you'll have a pretty good understanding so three things one you have mechanical tension you have metabolic stress and then you have muscle damage i'm going to go over the last one first because i want to get it out of the way and i don't want to give it too much attention Muscle damage, that usually happens more, think about when you have an injury or you shock the system or you do something novel and new and uh, it might be even extreme, something you haven't done for like ever and it's brand new. So you end up shocking the system. It's usually associated with muscle soreness as well. And while this is a stimulus for growth, a lot of times the recovery period that you need after being shocked is, um, so much that you can't live, lift as intense or as consistently for that rest of that week or a couple days after. So while muscle damage can uh, stimulate growth, it's probably not the most sustainable approach. We then have mechanical tension. Mechanical tension is just pretty much loading the system. So you have to put a load on there. Whether you put weight on a bar or you use your body weight, it has to be greater than usual. Whatever you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, it has to be more than that. Uh, research points towards a minimum of about 30% of your one rep max. So um, you know, we used to think that you needed to lift even heavier than that, but some research shows that you can lift a little lighter as long as you bring it uh, you know, close to failure. So the big piece to understand here is that mechanical tension is um, loading the system. So then you have metabolic stress. Metabolic stress is when you start to accumulate a lot of metabolites in that muscle. So metabolites, you might not understand, but I'll give you an idea. Think about you have a work site and you need to, you have a deadline for this job that needs to get done. So you're probably going to need a lot of workers, you're going to need uh, a lot of equipment, you're going to need a lot of sanitation trucks to get rid of the waste. And right, metabolites are kind of similar in the body, right? So it's the product that starts to happen when you are working. You know, the waste is probably the perfect example. You get a lot of work done, but there's a lot of garbage that now has to then be brought you know, to the garbage dump. So uh, when you're getting a lot of work done in that muscle and maybe even a short, in a short amount of time or maybe whatever it is, you're just coming close to failure. <clears throat> you're coming close to failure in your workout, but you're really stressing that muscle and you're increasing the amount of metabolites that are there. This is something that you can't just do for, um, you know, go on and on all day. You're starting to get to a point where fatigue is really, really kicking in and those metabolites is, are, are uh, accumulating. So with both of these, mechanical tension and metabolic stress, there's two big markers I like to look at. With mechanical tension, I'm looking at volume, right? So when you talk about you need to load the system, so volume is sets times reps times weight. 
think three sets, 10 reps, 100 pounds. Three times 10 times 100, you have 3,000. Right, so I lifted 3,000 pounds, you could say, in that workout routine. That was my total volume for that exercise. So when you're comparing your, or you're doing a new technique or a new advanced practice, you want to know, was volume similar to, uh, did, were you able to get this, a similar amount of volume that you would have in your traditional training? If you see a tremendous drop off, so what do I mean by that? Maybe you're lifting so light that you can't get anywhere near a th you know, 3,000 pounds. And um, no matter how many reps you do, I mean, you'd have to be here all day doing this to get anywhere near the 3,000 pounds. So if you see a big drop off in volume or if you even see a huge spike in volume, you want to kind of avoid both of those. Uh, you want the practice to be similar to um, your traditional training or even slightly now starting to be able to get in uh, a little bit more. I think about it like sneaking in reps. When we do something called the drop set, right? you may be able to just get in a little more, a little more, a little more volume, a little more volume, and you just kind of sneak it in, in there. And I'll talk about drop sets in just a minute. But so I'm using volume to help determine uh, how much load I'm putting on the system. Uh, the next piece, metabolic stress, I'm using failure as the tool there. Are you coming close to failure or how many reps do you have in reserve is what they say. So if I could have done five more, that means I had five reps in reserve. So you want to be close to failure. You want to be getting there. You want to stress the system. Think about those workers back that we said before. If we didn't have enough sanitation trucks and that job couldn't get done that night, the message is going to get back to the boss and the boss is going to say make sure there's some damn garbage trucks there the next day and that's what's happening in the body you want to bring it to failure and you want it to fail and you want the message to get back that's going to provide the stimulus that's needed to be able to um, have some growth happen there or some change or whatever it may be so you know, those are the two big things I'm looking at. I'm, I'm measuring volume and I'm slowly trying to increase volume over time. And I'm always trying to bring my workouts when it comes to lifting somewhat close to failure. I don't want to get to failure all the time. That's going to be very stressful on the body. You can do it sometimes. But am I coming close to failure and is volume similar to, to traditional training or slightly going up? And if I see those things, I'm going to have a stimulus for growth. And then there's a million different ways that you can do it. There are a million ways that you can play with rest and weight and all of these things to be able to uh, you know, provide a stimulus for growth. So two strategies. I touched on them briefly both already, but you had supersets. Supersets is going to be when you do two exercises back to back without rest and then you take your rest period and that's set one. So if I did a goblet squat and then I went right into doing a dumbbell bench press, then I rest a minute and then I do it again. So what we found is that that saves time but then the gains seem to be just as similar as traditional training. So it's a big time saver. Uh, if you pair a upper body and a lower body exercise, good. If you pair uh, opposites, so they say an agonist and an antagonist, a push and a pull, that's also good. If you pair an agonist and an agonist, so for example, a dumbbell bench press and then a chest fly, so I'm targeting the same muscle group twice, might not be as effective. Probably because of the fact that even though you're working the same muscle group, you might be working slightly different muscle fibers. And then that second exercise that you go to do is gonna just be, um, the quality's not gonna be there and it might not be providing the same stimulus for growth. And I think just because uh, you feel like you worked hard doesn't always mean that you actually did work hard. And the way that I could measure if you worked hard was volume, right? Were you able to put out a similar or same amount of actual work? I can see uh, you know, what weight you lifted and how many times you lifted it and how many reps you lifted it for or sets and reps both. Um, so the next uh, strategy is also going to be drop sets. Drop sets is you're doing that exercise and then you uh, come close or you know you come close to failure and you take off about 10 to 20 percent of the weight and then you go close to failure again, drop off about 10 to 20 percent of the weight, go again. Every time you drop off the weight, that's a drop set. And I love that because it gives a really nice pump. Um, 
and it's a little bit different than the pre-fatigue that happens in the superset of an agonist agonist because you are hitting the same muscle fibers, right? It's not like I'm changing that exercise. But a, a drop set is a pretty awesome strategy as well. In the episode, we went over tri sets, giant sets, German volume training, cluster sets, rest pause. We went over a lot of different stuff. So, um, you know, tune into the episode, check it out. When you're thinking about these advanced techniques, you know, use volume to help measure how much load you're putting on the body. Always come close to failure. Uh, make sure that it's also local fatigue and what I mean by that is whatever muscle that I'm trying to grow is where I want to feel that fatigue. I don't want it to be that um, you know huffing and puffing and I just feel general fatigue. I want the burn to be right where that muscle is right um, or the failure to be because of where that muscle is. So using those two pieces there I think you know you'll, you'll be providing a stimulus for growth but um, so thank you for tuning in today. Check out the whole episode, and I'll catch you all soon.